Now then, scrotal lumps are something that commonly appears in surgical exams and it's really important that you have a logical approach to examining a scrotal lump so that you can easily tell between the common pathologies. But what are these differential diagnoses? Well, really, we'll be asking you to differentiate between four separate things. First of all, an inguinoscrotal hernia, which is obviously an inguinal hernia that protrudes all the way through the superficial inguinal ring into the scrotum. Secondly, a hydrocele, which is a collection of fluid within the tunica vaginalis, which is the double-layered membrane that surrounds most of the testis. Thirdly, a cyst of the epididymis, an epididymal cyst. And fourthly, a solid tumour of the testis itself. I'm going to show you a simple algorithm that you can use that will enable you to differentiate between these four conditions. There are, of course, some other diagnoses such as varicocele and sebaceous cysts of the scrotum, and I'm not going to deal uh, specifically with those today. So, as always, we'd recommend that you start examining the patient while they're standing up in a well-lit room with the patient adequately exposed, etc. It's really important before you do anything to ask the patient if anything hurts, as if you go in and start palpating and you make them uncomfortable without asking them first, that will definitely lose you some points. So what are you looking for? Well, obviously you're looking to see which side the swelling is. Secondly, you're looking for any obvious skin changes. And thirdly, you're looking very closely at the scrotum and the groin for any obvious scars from previous surgery. So once you've conducted a thorough um, inspection, we can then go on to the examination proper. And this is where our algorithm comes in. You need to ask yourself three questions as you're examining the patient. The first question is, can you get above the lump? Now, what does this mean exactly? It means that when you palpate the scrotal lump, if you keep feeling above it, if the lump is arising from a scrotal structure, i.e. a testicular tumour, a hydrocele or an epididymal cyst, you should be able to feel the spermatic cord above the lump. Um, if it's an inguinoscrotal hernia, of course, you won't, as the hernia itself um, protrudes through the superficial inguinal canal into the scrotum, so you'll just feel the hernia and it'll be harder to feel the spermatic cord. So, therefore, if the answer to question one is yes, I can get above it, we know that the lump isn't an inguinoscrotal hernia. Now, I won't talk more about hernias today. I'll get one of my general surgical colleagues to come and give me a hand to do that on another occasion. So let's assume that you can get above the lump. Um, therefore, the pathologies that we have left are testicular tumour, hydrocele or epididymal cyst. So the second question in the algorithm to ask yourself is, can you relate the lump to the testis itself? Now you'll have three scenarios here. The first scenario is that the lump will be distinctly separate from the testis and if this is the case you are usually going to be dealing with an epididymal cyst. Now remember the epididymis sits behind the testis and has three parts, a head, body and tail and cysts are commonest in the head. Therefore epididymal cysts usually feel like distinctly separate lumps which sit above the testis. They can get quite big and they're often the same consistency as the testis and I've had more than one patient over the years telling me that they think they've grown an extra testis. The second scenario is that the lump arises from the body of the testis itself. So you can feel the testis and usually arising from the surface somewhere you'll feel a firm lump. If this is the case, then you know that this is going to be a testicular tumour of some description. Most of these will be germ cell tumours, but there are of course other causes. The third scenario, and the trickiest situation is where you can just feel a diffuse swelling occupying the whole scrotum. So you can definitely get above it, so you know it's not a hernia. And the possibilities here are, number one, that it's a hydrocele, because as you remember, the tunica vaginalis sits all the way around most of the testis. So if it's full of fluid and it's a tense swelling, you will not be able to feel the underlying testis. The second possibility is that the diffuse swelling represents a solid testicular uh, mass that's occupied the whole testis. And believe it or not, it can be quite difficult to tell just by palpation between a tense hydrocele and a solid testicular mass. This is where question three in the algorithm comes in, and that is, does the mass transilluminate? But what is transillumination? Essentially, it's a really great clinical sign to demonstrate 
and you do require a dark room and a bright torch. And what you do is shine the light directly at the mass and if it's filled with clear fluid, such as a hydrosil usually is, the whole swelling lights up like a glow lamp. If however it's a solid mass, such as a testicular tumour, then it won't transilluminate. So this is how we differentiate between hydrosils and solid testicular masses. If you want to be really clever, um, if you've identified the swelling to be an epididymal cyst in step two of the algorithm, you can transilluminate those as well. In fact, they are said to be brilliantly transilluminant, although personally I've never been convinced that they transilluminate any differently to a hydrosil. There are a few occasions where a hydrosil won't transilluminate very well. Number one is if the patient's had an infected hydrosil and instead of having clear fluid you have turbid, sometimes pus-like fluid. The second scenario is if the hydrosil contains very many internal septations, i.e. rather than just being one compartment of fluid, it's lots of uh, loculated pockets of fluid. These are rare though, and it would be really mean to give you one of those in the exam. So for practical purposes, most hydrosils that you'll see in the exam will transilluminate. And that's it. So you can see that by applying those three um, questions in the algorithm, you can differentiate between the four common scrotal pathologies. So just to recap, number one, can I get above the lump? Number two, can I relate the lump to the testis itself? And number three, does it transilluminate? Thanks for watching. Watch out for more videos and I look forward to seeing you again soon.